Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, we welcome you to Scott Raley's Chapel. We come as we are, God's children in need of God's unending gift of love. Let us worship God. Some announcements for you are that um, our final chapel speaker for the year is Aaron Sutton, and he's on this Friday, April 24th. Um, we have Mass this Saturday, April 25th at 7 p.m. here in the chapel. And Open Door Worship this Sunday, April 26th, is Senior Vespers with Anna Cooper, Ed Dimitrovich, Laura Mink, Julia Davis, Joel Vaughn, Rebecca Mobley, Kevin Suchicki, Sarah Ferguson, and music by Alexis Gro Musgrove, Tim Lane, and the Concert Choir. Let us pray. Almighty God, in you are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Open our eyes and ears that we may see and hear the wonders of your word as shared by Scott this morning. And give us grace that we may clearly understand and freely choose the way of your wisdom. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Will you please stand and join us in our opening song.
The first reading today comes from 1 Peter 1, verses 22 through 25. Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart, since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, but of imperishable through the living and abiding word of God. For all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of, a gra of grass. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of the Lord stands forevermore. The second reading comes from Matthew 24, verses 32 through 35. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as the, its branches becomes tender and puts out its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see all of these things, you know that he is near. At the very gates, truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. So where did it all begin? Let me set the scene for you. It was the first day, a fresh start, and in our fresh start group, everybody stood nervously around and looking at their shoes or, you know, pretending to text someone on their phone, except for Scott, who, <laughs> who asked, so did anyone else hate the ghost map? <laughs> to which I replied, yeah, that was terrible. And from this very first conversation on the first day of Fresh Start, I knew Scott and I would be great friends. As most of you know, Scott is one of the coolest kids on campus. In case you need evidence, we were the only two students in our class to complete the Fresh Start treasure hunt. Yeah, I, I know, it's a definition of cool. Uh, <laughs> apparently the school didn't even expect anyone to complete it either, because when we brought our completed papers to the office, uh, the prize was made up on the spot, a coffee mug. <laughs> so anyway, during this treasure hunt, Scott and I talked about a lot of topics ranging from our faith journeys to relationships to favorite music to, you guessed it, Star Wars. Uh, I knew he was going to be a great friend for these four years. Since then, I've had the pleasure of calling Scott a friend, a roommate, a praise band leader, a Bible study partner, a video game buddy, a Habitat trip co-worker, and a really fun, awesome guy. Uh, any of you who have ever had the chance to hang out with Scott for any period of time know he's probably the easiest person to talk to, and conversations are never dull. Uh, even though we joke around about some of the funny things uh, Scott says, it's no coincidence that he's the reason our entire group of friends came to know each other. Scott has always been an open, welcoming, engaging, and caring friend to all of us. It's been awesome to see Scott grow and change throughout college, and I know he's not the same Scott that walked onto Westminster four years ago. Even though we're, not, we're no longer roommates, Scott still knows how to brighten my day, and I'm sure he does the same for everyone he meets. So, to conclude an introduction for a man who really needs no introduction, let's give it up for our friend, our brother in Christ, and our favorite Sith Lord, Scott Rayleigh. Thank you so much. Um, I wish I could say some of those things didn't happen, but it's a chapel and I'm not allowed to lie, so... Um. <laughs> Thank you all so much for coming out to, uh, to hear my message this morning. I, I was hoping nobody would, would say something. It's my birthday, and I was wearing my suit. Put two and two together. <laughs> oh, uh, it's kind of weird, but... Uh, <laughs> Eddie and I came up with that joke before this morning, so... <laughs> but seriously, thank you all for coming out. It really means the world to me. Um, you're all here for different reasons. Friends, family, uh, people that have come to really make a difference in my life. I really want to thank you for being here, taking time out of your day to hear my words. Uh, being the chapel student worker for the past four years, uh, I've seen pretty much every sort of chapel imaginable. Um, but sometimes I think it turns out to be uh, kind of more of just a story. The ones that I remember most are the ones that focus on a message, not an individual. So I don't want this to be just a story to you all. I want each of you to be able to take home something by the end of my story. As Kevin mentioned, a lot has happened uh, since the time my parents dropped me off my freshman year and today, when graduation is just right around the corner. Um, as if you haven't laughed enough about my goofiness today, if you ask any three of these guys uh, about on my first day of school what happened, 
I uh, ended up walking into the girls' bathroom, a very occupied girls' bathroom on the third floor of Old Main, uh, thinking that it was the stairwell. Uh, certainly, <laughs> certainly a lot has changed since those times, but uh, some things don't change, that's for sure. When I was in high school, I thought that being a Christian simply meant believing in God. Or maybe it was believing in Jesus. I really didn't know what the difference was, but I was content knowing that my belief was sufficient. But one day, one of my greatest friends from back home, who really helped me on my faith journey, changed that viewpoint. She said, even Satan believes that God exists. Having heard that, I was thrown into confusion. How could my belief be wrong this entire time? What would that mean that I would have to do at this point? Was I even a Christian at all? Was I going to church on Sundays as a hypocrite? All valid responses for having my entire faith paradigm changed with one, one simple sentence. But that's life, isn't it? Change happens. Sometimes and oftentimes in the ways we don't expect, aren't comfortable with, and don't want to occur. When I walked onto campus, I was confident that by the end of my four years, I would be an effective business manager right from the get-go. Going through class at the beginning of the year, I was convinced that my high school relationship would last the four years and then continue after graduation. And I was firm in my belief that I was a strong Christian. In all cases, change happened, and I realized how wrong I was. The more classes that I took, the more I realized that being an effective manager was a continuous process that must be learned at a fundamental level before being built upon. After only one semester, my high school relationship fell through, and through all of the Christian organizations I was a part of, Seekers, the chapel office, my close group of friends in our Bible study, I realized that being a Christian was a lot more than I had expected, and change happened. Continuing on through the school year, I found solid academic success and obtained, uh, I obtained Dean's List recognition several times. I found another relationship that I felt could last a lifetime. I found a deeper connection in my faith journey through involvement with certain groups. Jim gave me the absolute blessing of leading the Second Chance Praise Team, even knowing that I didn't have any experience as a music director or a leader at that point. In fact, I'd be lying if I said I knew more than two praise songs before stepping into the role of Second Chance Praise Team Leader. Today, I have collected many, many songs <laughs> and have filled them in a binder that has become to know, I've come to know as the Chord Sheet Bible. <laughs> when I started, this binder was one, each, one inch thick. It is now three inches thick. Did you know that Walmart only carries binders up to four inches in thickness? So it's a good thing I'm graduating soon. <laughs> At the same time, I had the privilege of running Seeker, the Seekers Praise team in much the same way. And my close group of friends and I, uh, we would meet weekly for a Bible study. Change had certainly occurred, and it seemed this time for the better. But God has a unique way of changing our circumstances very quickly. Late in my junior year, that relationship hit a dead end. In short, my life was chaos, as an entire friendship circle was dissolved, along with a large amount of my happiness and my heart. It is incredible how once deep love is removed from our lives, even significant things in life don't seem quite so significant. Happy moments don't seem quite so happy. Life become, love becomes more of a memory than an act of experience. I found myself going through the motions as a priest team leader, and even worse, as a Christian. That was the rock bottom point of my life. But as I said earlier, God has a unique way of changing our circumstances very quickly, and change happened again. I was fortunate enough, and Joel can attest to this, to have a fantastic summer job at a racer's go-kart park. It was a great place to meet kind and very often unique individuals. <laughs> But at the core, it allowed for a lot of time of personal reflection. I could think, of, I could think about some of those hard-hitting questions that plagued me only a few months prior. Was I a Christian? Why was I a Christian? What does it mean in my life to call myself a Christian? Would God be happy with the way I act in my day-to-day -day life? Those answers are for me. And I hope the answers to those questions are evident without me having to tell any of you. But the key reflection I focused on is this. In a world full of changes, full of tuition changes, roommate changes, season changes, grade changes, relationship changes, friendship changes, food changes, professor changes, employment changes, members of your family changes. 
What does it mean when I read in my Bible from Matthew, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away? Or from 1 Peter, the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of the Lord stands forevermore. What exactly does that mean for us that God does not change? The Scott Rayleigh answer is this. Through every change that life throws us, God remains by our side. When we stray from his way, he remains. When we lose hope, he remains. When we have so much to do on our to-do lists that we cannot even think straight, he remains. Even when our faith falters and our belief is questioned, he remains. Constant, never changing. What a tremendous thing to be able to tell yourself when things get rough or when you see someone else going through a rough time. And if God does not change, neither does his plans for you. Some may say otherwise, but it is my belief that God has a plan written for each of us before we were born, before time itself began. But as long as we lean on God, our unchangeable rock, we cannot possibly fail his plan. Each of us is a small piece to a much larger puzzle, and it truly is a puzzle. We have no idea where our lives will take us, how it will make a difference in the world, how we can be used, and we certainly cannot see the end result always. Oftentimes, we wonder if we're one of those unfortunate pieces of a puzzle that wasn't included in the box. And it's times like these when we start to, que when we start to question our faith. Yet God's unchangeableness isn't just about never failing to have a plan for us. It also means that he will continue to love, care, and seek us when we are doubting. If you ever have the misfortune of feeling unloved or useless or purposeless, God is always there by your side, waiting for you to simply lift your eyes and see him. Because he is here beside us all, and not just in this chapel or not just in a church. It's all about having the ability to recognize that help is there for us. Over time, maybe that conglomerate of pieces finds its place among other groups of pieces. But it all starts with God's plan for us, our unique puzzle piece. My message to each of you is to encourage you to figure out where your puzzle piece fits. Some pieces are small, some are large. Some are decorative while others are bland. Some are shaped differently than others while some look very similar. But how great it is knowing that we have a place in that puzzle. God has a plan for each of us, and his plan cannot be changed. So long as we make the decision to follow in Jesus' footsteps, to believe he is our one and only Savior, and actively seek out other puzzle pieces to build the kingdom of God, we have meaning. And that final picture, whether we can see it or not, is so much bigger than our minor lapses, our not-so-great test scores, our political stances, and so on. Change happens every day whether it's a change of clothes or a change of major. We all face them. We can try to manage them the best that we can, but in the end, it isn't about our own ability. You see, as Scott Rayleigh, I can only do so much. But as a believer in Christ, I can do so much more. Change happens, but lean on the only one who will never change, and your puzzle piece is sure to fit in the place that it was designed to fit. Although change is something that occurs every day, there are a few constants that I want to acknowledge and give a special thank you to. To Rob, Eddie, and Kevin for reading and introducing me today and for being two of the greatest friends that I have ever had, and especially uh, two, three of the greatest friends that I will ever have. Three? Did I say two? Oh. Kevin doesn't count. <laughs> but thank you guys. To my parents, who were able to make out, uh, make the special trip up to hear my message, and who I could turn to through any change that I was experiencing, I thank you. Uh, to the multitude of friends that I have, uh, both young and old, both people who've been in it, there from the beginning, like Kevin, to friends that I have only just met on the spring break trip team, uh, like Brett, who didn't even know my name before the trip. <laughs> to my girlfriend, Rachel, and her continuous loving support, to Diane and everyone else who works very feverishly up there on the balcony and who rarely get recognized for it, as I can personally give testament to. <laughs> to my pastor from back home, Steve Franklin, for making the trip up even though he has a cold, even though he barely was able to preach yesterday. I thank you so much for coming to hear. And lastly, to the one special person who goes far beyond his calling as a pastor, 
far beyond his calling as a friend, who is able to listen to me for hours as I pour out everything that is going wrong in my life and help me find my way again. To the person who appointed me as the leader of Second Chance for the past three years, thank you, Jim Moore. Thank you all again for coming out to support me. You have no idea how much it means to me, and I hope that my message is able to be carried out past 1230 today. Second Chance has one more song to play for you, and it's actually the last time that Second Chance will ever be able to play as the group that it currently exists. Uh, it's a personal favorite song of mine, and it's one that I could never play at a Vesper service. And let me tell you, after three years of being a praise team leader, any chance that I can get to play something new, I will take it. <laughs> there are only so many times a person can hear or play 10,000 reasons, and it is less than 10,000 times. I know that it is new, but I encourage you all to sing along if you know it, or at least open your mouth in various patterns to make me feel like you know it. <laughs> Thank you all again. about Scott, I have a quote book in my office and there's all kinds of things that have been added to the quote book and uh, when I read some of Scott's quotes, it truly brings a smile to my face. Um, but I need to know, uh, so I, I always have kind of joked that it's, at times you could be our Sheldon Cooper. And so today when you had two of your three friends here, uh, I thought it happened again. <laughs> So, well done. <laughs> Scott's been my techie. Uh, more than once he's fixed my phone or my computer or other people's phones and computers. Uh, Jill made him banana bread recently because she fixed his or her um, little tablet thing so she could do things. But I want to know who, who shaved with Scott and had such a grand time. <laughs> Because one of the quotes in the quote book, I think, goes along the lines of, that was the most fun shaving I've ever had with you guys, or something like that. So that's something I tend to do by myself. <laughs> but 
that. I'm just kind of like that. So, <laughs> Scott, you've been a joy uh, for a whole variety of reasons. Um, I probably have seen you more than any other student on this campus two or three times a week. Um, you had the, the pleasure of getting to learn about life from Carrie Ann, uh, who I saw yesterday, and she sends greetings to you. Um, between her and Diane, conversations in that particular office probably helped you grow up quickly. Uh, I, you have talked to Scott about some of the conversations. Um, but one of my favorites is a picture that came from this year's work trip where you had been working on a door holder, I guess, I don't know what we call that thing. <laughs> and it's a picture of you hanging from the top. And I thought to myself, that's kind of been your journey in life at Westminster. Wherever it's taken you, whatever needed to be done, you kind of jumped in there and gave it a shot. And it wasn't always good, um, but you lived through it because through the journey you're never alone. And thank you for sharing that with us because that's a good reminder that times, at times life is going to be really good for you all and you're gonna be smiling and happy and you're gonna celebrate births and you're gonna celebrate uh, relationships and you're gonna celebrate job successes, but other times you're gonna feel as if life is crashing down around you. And when life is crashing around you, you need a foundation that holds you up. And that foundation is family, that foundation is your faith journey, that foundation is truly God present in your midst all along because you can't get beyond God. And so thank you so much for that. Uh, it's always a joy to me, for me anyways, to bring back uh, either parents or alumni who have been part of the Westminster program and now serve as pastors out and about. And, and Scott referred to Steve Franklin. Steve is a pastor at Meridian Presbyterian Church over in Butler. Um, he is uh, a good friend and he's married, has a wonderful little baby, and uh, they've all been sick. And so today we are blessed by Steve's presence here on campus. Steve was a real active member of habit or of uh, fellowship of christian athletes when he was on campus and uh, so steve if you'll come up and share with us uh, any great words that you would like and then your benediction we can shake hands because we have the same thing um, <laughs> <laughs> it has uh, been a, a joy to hear you scott today um, five years ago I stood here nine years ago giving my own senior chapel, uh, which is hard to believe it was that long ago. But five years ago, I was a fresh in ministry, and uh, this young kid came in and he said, uh, will you write a recommendation for me to get this scholarship at Westminster? And I said, what's your name? Because uh, <laughs> I was new in my church and Scott. And so uh, we got to talking and, and there was something special about Scott. Um, and so I filled out the recommendation for him and I called my good friend Jim, uh, who started as a chaplain here when I was a student. And I said, you know, there's this kid from my church coming up. Uh, his name's Scott Rayleigh. Look out for him. Uh, there's something special about him. And uh, that has obviously proven to be true. And so it is an honor to be here uh, and to hear your chapel and to see how God has worked in your life over the last few years. Uh, I just encourage you to continue to share your gift. And I told you that a few months ago when you shared it with our church, and I'll tell you that here in front of everybody. You have a gift, and you should use it for the glory of God. Uh, as we go from this place... I just always remember the words that Scott shared with us, and that's change happens. Ten years ago, I never imagined that I would be the pastor of a small church in Butler, Pennsylvania. I had never heard of Butler, Pennsylvania ten years ago. And yet God has worked and moved in ways and connected me with people like Scott and his family. Uh, and it's been amazing to see how God has worked. Change happens, but God does not. And that is uh, something to rest on. And as we go from here, hear the benediction. May God be gracious unto you and make his face to shine upon you. May he hold you in the palm of his hand, always, for God is always with us. And as we go from this place, we go in the love of God the Father, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May he be with you now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>